On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, is China buying the port of Hamburg? I'm your host, Sal McCoglano. Welcome to today's episode. So, China, as part of its Belt and Road Initiative, has been purchasing and buying influence and portions of ports around the world. It's pretty extensive. We've seen it happen in not just ports in Asia and Africa, but now we see it in Europe. Uh, a major, for example, foothold was done by China into the port of Piraeus in Greece, and we actually saw it here in the United States in the port of Long Beach. But now we're talking about the Chinese overseas shipping company, Costco, not Costco. Costco is the big box store where you buy, you know, pallets of toilet paper. Costco, without the T, is the state-run shipping line of China, and this is mainland China, not Taiwan. We're talking about the People's Republic of China, is making a bid to buy 35% stake in one of three terminals in the port of Hamburg, which is the 20th largest port in the world. So it's a substantial port we're talking about. So we're going to break this down. We're going to look at this. What is going on right now? What are the different sides saying about this? Look a little bit of a historical aspect of it, too, and talk about its ramifications for us. If you're new to the channel, take a moment. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they're coming out. All right, let's jump into the story. Obviously, lots of stories to have here. We'll pick this one here by Reuters. EU warned Germany against China port buy is a Reuters story featured in G-Captain. So the European Commission warned the German government about this investment. Uh, specifically, they don't want to see Costco getting this kind of one-third share in one of the major ports here. Uh, the Germans' ruling coalition is divided over whether to approve the investment, government sources say, even as Beijing urges Berlin not to politicize the bid, and the Port Authority warns this could hurt the economy goes on down here. According to Handelsblatt, the EU warned that sensitive information about the business could make it into Chinese hands if Germany allowed the investment. Uh, it goes on here, uh, and, and excuse me, uh, Handelsblatt is a German daily, a German newspaper service. The German government, which is still weighing whether to approve the deal, this declined to comment on the report. So let's talk a little bit about the port of Hamburg for, first. Because this port is a tremendous port, let me be clear. 20th largest port in the world handles 8.7 million TEUs, or 20-foot equivalent units. These are the 20-foot containers. Most ships carry 40-footers, but these are the 20-foot equivalent units. Now, obviously, nowhere near a bigger port as Shanghai. It's actually smaller than New York, New Jersey, or L.A., or Long Beach, for that matter, although Long Beach is close to it right now. But what makes this port really unique here is a couple of things. Number one, it can handle the ultra-large container vessels. These are those container ships that can carry over 18,000 TEU. These are ships like Ever Given, uh, Ever Ace, uh, Ever A Lot, you know, big, huge, monstrous ships. Receives most of its cargo from China. In fact, China is the number one trading partner that comes in and out of this port, with the United States being a distant distant second. Handles 7,371 port calls a year, but perhaps most importantly, this is Europe's largest port railway hub. So four major rail lines come in here. This is where a lot of transshipment of goods go. About a third of the cargo that comes in here is transshipped onto other vessels, but two-thirds go into what they call hinterland. It goes into road, rail, or barge traffic for transport around Europe. And so the Port of Hamburg is a substantial port when it comes to the infrastructure of Europe. Start looking at some of these stories behind the scenes. So Hamburg Port backs Costco terminal acquisition over German government's Chinese concern. So two of the big players here in the port, uh, Hamburg Hafen and Logistics AG, basically said that the German government should not block this, arguing that the deal will bring investment to the port and poses no threat to national security. Goes on here, Economic Minister Robert Habeck indicated last week the government would likely veto the deal due to concerns related to Chinese investment in critical infrastructure. Habeck, a member of the Greens Party, and other officials from Chancellor Olaf Scholz's ruling coalition have recently sharpened their criticism of Beijing's 
Beijing over its human rights record and indicated a tougher line on trade with China. Quote, there's no substantial reasons why this deal should be blocked. A spokesman for Hamburg Hafen said Thursday. So obviously what you're seeing here is a big fight over whether or not to allow this to take place. The next story here deals with Costco shipping unit taking minority stakes in this term. Port operations arm of Costco shipping will buy a minority stake in Port of Hamburg's container terminal teller wrote CTT, the main calling point for Costco shipping. So one of the things we've been seeing, and this has been through uh, true throughout the shipping industry, is a lot of shipping companies are buying back terminals. They bled themselves from their terminals back in 2008. In 2008, when the global recession hit, a lot of shipping companies found themselves in a bit of a quandary. All of a sudden, freight rates went down, freight volume went down, but they had invested heavily in new tonnage. They had over-invested. They were buying these new large ships. And so they had to sell off some portions of their businesses because of the fact that they had locked in on these new vessels. And one of the things that got sold off were terminals. A lot of shipping companies had their own terminals. Maersk, for example, has the APM terminals, the, uh, uh, the uh, AP Molar terminals. So Maersk would go into there. Costco would have its own terminals. A lot of Chinese shipping firms would, OCL would. And so what you're seeing right now is the attempt here for them to buy it back. Uh, it goes on here, Costco shipping uh, will acquire 35% stake in the terminals with plans to enhance the interconnection and logistics business between China and Hamburg through joint efforts with Hamburg Hafen and Logistics AG. CTT is one of three HL, HHLA, that's that big long word I just said, container terminals at the port of Hamburg. The terminal has four berths, 14 container gantry cranes capable of handling Costco's largest container ships with a capacity of 20,000 TEU or more. It goes down here a little further. The maritime world is currently facing intense change. Long-term trusting customer relations like the one HHLA has tended for 40 years in trade with China are much more important now. So making the argument here that if we do not allow Costco to buy in here, they may take their business somewhere else, which would have a economic downturn for the port of Hamburg and decide, listen, we're just going to go over there and we're going to go basically do our business someplace else. So a lot of kind of muscling going on here. Go on to this other story. German chancellor tries to quell dispute over port deal with China's Costco. A Bloomberg story talking about this. Olaf Schultz denied reports that he's already reached a decision for over the disputed sale of a stake in the Hamburg container terminal. Quote, nothing has been decided yet and many questions still need to be addressed. Goes down here with the section entitled Blackmail Danger. German econ uh, economy minister Robert Habeck opposes the planned purchase, arguing that the Hamburg port is part of the country's critical infrastructure. Habeck is currently lobbying for an extension of the deadline in order to enable a discussion within the government. Quote, we have learned that dependencies from countries which then might use their own interests in order to blackmail us are no longer just an abstract phenomenon, he said in Hamburg with regard to Germany's reliance on Russian gas imports. We shouldn't repeat these mistakes. So Germany obviously does not want to go down the road they did with Russia being overly dependent on a critical resource for the operation of their ports. And if you look at what China has been doing over the past decade, they have been ingraining themselves and building an infrastructure in ports around the world. Many people will tell you that China has only one military base overseas, and that is in Djibouti, which is perfectly true. However, they have commercial input everywhere, and very similar to the way the Royal Navy had its footprint around the world through the likes of P&O lines and Cunard back in the early 1900s and 1800s, we see China doing the same exact thing. They're having inroads in these ports all around the world because of the infrastructure they're buying into. Now, there's been resistance to this. The most recent was in the United States, where the U.S. halted a deal by Costco to take over the ownership of the Long Beach Container Terminal. Now, Costco's uh, bought out a entity called Orient Overseas International Limited, OOIL, in 2017. However, the Trump administration fighting China basically halted their ability to purchase the terminal. Now, understand, 
Lots of times when we talk about this purchasing a terminal, it depends on the nature of the nation and the country. In the case of Long Beach, you don't own the land, you lease the land. In this case, Costco was going to take over the lease for the LBCT terminal, which is the most modern terminal, by the way, in both Long Beach and uh, Los Angeles. The tray pack is really good up in LA, but I would argue LBCT by volume is probably the biggest one right there. The Long Beach Board of Harbor Commissioners on September 9th approved an agreement transferring the lease to operate the LBCT from Orient Overseas International Lines to Macquarie Infrastructure Partners. That prevented Costco from taking over the lease of the terminal, and you see that done in the Port of Long Beach. Germany faces a real big quandary. What do you do in this situation? You want the infrastructure. You want these ships coming in. The amount of trade that Costco brings into Hamburg is tremendous. What happens if they decide to go somewhere else? Now, you also have to raise the question, where else are they going to go? What other port can they get an interest in that they want to sell? There's still an economic interest to go into Germany. China and Germany have huge trading deals between each other. But this takes me back, i got to say as a historian here, it takes me back to this issue about inroads into ports and all the way back to the 1840s. This is a very famous image that comes from the Opium Wars of the 1840s. This specifically is early 1841. And this is the destruction of elements of the Chinese Navy, their junks, by vessels of, or British vessels sailing off the coast. The vessel right here is the Nemesis. And what's interesting about this, this is the Opium War. The British are trying to sell opium into China. China is trying to stop it. And the goal here is to force the doors open, particularly the port of Nanking and the port of Hong Kong. And in this case, what you see is warships firing on Chinese warships, but these aren't British warships. These are commercial vessels of the East India Company. This is a private company with British naval officers captaining them, waging war against the Chinese Navy. And, you know, there's a fear. I'm not, I'm not worried about Costco ships firing into Hamburg. That's not what I'm worried about. But the fear here is that businesses, corporations are getting so big, so powerful, that they're the ones driving foreign policy, driving trade businesses, driving trade policy, driving all this. And we have to be very careful about national interests. And that's what Germany's talking about right now. Germany is worried about the fact that Costco may buy a third, 35% interest in one of three terminals in Hamburg. And it's creating dissent between the European Union, the port of Hamburg, the German government, and different factions within the German government. And again, this all goes back to infrastructure and global trade and that network that China is creating under the Belt and Road Initiative. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it around social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, you can hit that super thanks button below, which allows you to contribute directly to the page, or head over to Patreon. You'll see a link at the very end of the video or down in the show notes, and you become a patron of the page. Monthly, yearly, whatever you can give, as low as $2 a month, is great. I appreciate anything you can do. Until our next episode, this is Sal, signing off.